Okay, today I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about the differences between uh, these red boards and what's on the schematic on the data sheet for this driver board. Uh, now, you might notice right away that this board is damaged. Um, I was doing a bunch of different experiments and of course I blew it up. Uh, you can't learn very much without blowing stuff up. Uh, anyways, I put this one away. I have a, the bigger one is now in the garage. That will be my next video. We'll be testing the bigger one. But for now, I'm just going to talk about uh, what the differences are here. Um, there's two major differences. Um, and one is an isolation transformer. Uh, and I'll bring that over here with the uh, schematic. So when you have, um, it asks for feedback from for the output. When you have your live and your neutral, you got your big giant transformer here, depending on how, what your power level is. It doesn't matter what your power level is, it should still be isolated. You can get uh, ground loops and other issues. Um, if you have a ground on your output and a ground on your batteries, uh, you're going to cause some problems if you don't have an isolation transformer. Uh, generally, a 10 to 1 transformer should work fine. Um, they supplied a transformer that goes from 220 to 12. Uh, and that's this transformer that was here. I removed it and put it on a separate board. Uh, by removing this and put it on a separate board, you uh, completely isolate the higher voltage from this board. Because otherwise, you on these little connectors here, you have 220 or 240 volts AC. I don't think it's very really safe. Uh, something can get blown up very easily with that. So this is on a separate board um, along with um, the uh, capacitor filter capacitor that's on the output which is actually five microfarads uh, this is only 2.2 microfarads on the schematic uh, anyways and then that way on this schematic here they have 100k to bring that down it's neat this is looking for like three volts or something like that uh, and so that, that's the feedback circuit that keeps this constant so as you add a load if this voltage might sag this will immediately respond to that and then the output drive uh, driving will give it some more current to counteract that sag so yeah, that, that's good to have. But the question that came up recently was, uh, what are these things? What's, what's going on here? Because uh, this is not on, on the schematic for the data sheet uh, for this guy. Uh, so I took uh, some, a little bit of digging here. Uh, so this is what's going on. Uh, I think it has something to do with adding large number of uh, MOSFETs or MOS tubes, as the Chinese like to call them for some reason. I think that's a bad translation error, but they're called FETs. Uh, field effect transistor, FET. Okay, anyways, so um, what's happening is that you have your drive signals. There's four of them for your H-bridge. Uh, it's called uh, 1HO, 2HO, 2LO, and um, 1LO. And what this circuit is doing is, is intercepting that. Uh, and it's also tying into um, uh, internal feedback, VS1 and VS2. So, but the, there's two, there's four circuits, but it's just there's only two of them that are copies of each other. So, just we'll start with two HO for now. Uh, the signal comes in, it goes to this additional circuit, it ties off of VS2, and it also requires 12 volts. And then other everything else is essentially the same. Uh, and that's uh, this circuit here, the top one. So uh, VS2 and or sorry, two HO comes in. It goes to uh, these two resistors, and then it goes into um, this um, bipolar transistor, and that's what the, they are on there. Uh, the bipolar transistors that are in use are a TIP or TIP41C and a TIP42C, and, and that's what they look like here. Um, that's a base collector and emitter, uh, and what the 41C is an NPN and the 42C is a PNP uh, transistor. And uh, you can always remember that by uh, the acronym. The N N NPN is the, is the silicone junction that uh, describes the, the, how this works uh, as far as two diodes go, but it's just easier to remember not pointing in. And then this one here is pointing in. Uh, so this direction of the diode uh, that's internal to the bipolar transistor. I learned that in college, that was a, a while ago. Uh, anyways, so, um, you have your tip 41C here, and this basically drives out to your uh, FET bank uh, where your normal values are. Uh, the other thing I wanted to add while I'm talking about the FET bank is that in the data sheet, they have 4.7 ohms and the uh, signal diode. 
um, on this guy here, they have changed them all to 10 ohms. It's still very low value, um, but uh, it might be important. I'm, I'm not sure. But um, okay, so continuing on. And it uses the, uh, the PNP transistor, I think, to make sure that, they, that any residual charge that's holding those gates open is drained right away. Um, so it uh, VS2 passes through, essentially. It's just kind of tapping into it. But it has this uh, resistor here going into it. I'm not claiming to understand how this circuit works or why it should be added, but I think it's probably a good idea since I believe that these guys actually know what they're doing. Uh, and Chinese suppliers, it's kind of rare to find a Chinese supplier that actually knows what they're doing. You got your 12 volts coming in, and it goes through a rectifier diode, and that is not right. Hold on. Okay, so that should uh, correct it. Just missed this one line here. Um, it's got a, um, a ceramic capacitor after that uh, signal diode. So we have uh, this uh, rectifier diode, and then it goes underneath the board, and then it has that little ceramic diode there. Um, all this, these ceramic diodes indicated are labeled as 104. I believe that's in picofarads. Don't uh, use that information as, as true. Va validate that uh, because I, I'm really not sure. It's probably in picofarads, which means it's 100,000 nanofarads uh, or 0.1 microfarads. Uh, anyway, so um, this rectifier diode is going to pin two of uh, the NPN transistor there. And I'll flip this around. So <clears throat> that would be the one that's on the left here. And so there you go. It's going to pin two, and it's going to these two capacitors. So as I have here... It's uh, going to those two capacitors and a pin two. The pin two, like I said up here, is up top of the uh, transistor. Okay, so once that's in there, so that's the 12 volts. Basically, it's kind of acting as a buffer to, uh, in case this is not strong enough to drive a whole bunch of transistors, this asks, acts, A-C-T-S, acts as a kind of an amplifier uh, <clears throat> to boost this signal. Uh, but the rest of it, I'm not so sure, uh, especially with these these uh, capacitors in here. Um, but anyways, that's the, the circuit for um, 2HO and uh, 1HO and VS1 and VS2. Uh, that's the same circuit. Now, when you go down to the other side, uh, the lower end, that's a uh, 2LO uh, and 1LO, uh, it's a little different, um, and it's using it does use the 12 volts, but uh, not as much. And uh, it connects to. Uh, let's just flip this over here. It's on this side. It's uh, it's I wouldn't say it's ground, because like you see these uh, two bus bars here, right? Uh, this is your current sensor uh, resistor. It's technically a resistor. It looks it looks like a bunch of shunts here. That's how it gets current feedback, um, and you'd you'd call this side ground because that's the lowest potential. Uh, but for some reason, these uh, this uh, buffer circuit is connected uh, to it's connected to ground, but on the other side of that resistor. So it's kind of more like uh, just DC minus. I, I labeled it. Uh, so there's it's connected there, and it's connected there. You can see it on the traces. So that's this uh, second circuit here. It's very similar. Um, so you have, I called it bat minus on this and I called it DC minus on this. It's really probably should be DC minus because it doesn't connect directly to the battery. It's going through uh, this guy here. Um, anyways, so you have your uh, drive circuit here and there is no VS1 or VS2 on this side. Um, so it's a little confusing. Uh, you have your drive circuit, same thing, 5.1K. Uh, and your 10 ohms going to your uh, uh, transistors. Uh, and then you have your 12 volts is only going to your first uh, transistor, and then it's got uh, the, this 100 microfarad at 50 volt capacitor. Uh, and same thing here, the, the plus side of the capacitor points to the 12 volts. 
Um, and then that's the 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitor. And then it's got another capacitor on the outlet and another 5.1K on uh, that goes from the... That's, it is, it is a little confusing, but it's there. The drive circuit to the FET bank. It's on this side here, right? Uh, and cut all these off. There's a 5.1K essentially going from the drive line to the bat minus or DC minus on the other side of that 5.1K resistor. Maybe it's just for noise or something, um, but it's kind of like a pull down resistor, if you want to call it that. Uh, again, so that's the same thing, uh, same components to TIP 41C and 42C. So I hope this helps. Uh, if, if you're going to be uh, designing your own thing, I really suggest following this schematic very closely. These might even be considered optional. I have that blue um, inverter and it works just fine without them. I'm just not sure, so sure about reliability. Uh, and um, so yeah, so the other thing that's kind of new is that on that new power, um, the new uh, red inverter that I got, they've changed some of these jumpers back here. So what these jumpers are, this one here selects 50 hertz or 60 hertz, and it's set to 60 hertz right now. Uh, this, these two up here select if you want a soft start or immediate start. And I always go to soft start, but when they shipped that 10 kilowatt uh, inverter to me, they had it on hard start. And that, uh, do, with a power supply, I'm just doing it with a current limited power supply, it overwhelmed the power supply as expected, so I switched that back to soft start. It's not good for appliances and things like that because it's kind of like acts as a slow ramp up. It's just safer to, to for doing tests and things like that. Plus, it probably improves the life of the transform uh, transistors because you're not just overwhelming them with a huge surge current when uh, when you're turning it on. And then these, you have to look at the data sheet. These select the dead time when um, when it's creating the wave like this. When it, it will rest at zero volts for a little while because if, again, if on the H bridge, it's kind of like that one on and that one on, and then it'll switch, and then it'll go to this one on and this one on, and that will create the AC waveform across here. And it's doing it very quickly. If any time, even a, a fraction of a second, if this one and this one are on briefly, st still on, and then it switches over to run these ones, then you got some trouble because it's shorted, you're shorting your battery completely out, and you'll blow up a, a lot of stuff. So um, this dead time will uh, determine how long everything is sh shut off for to make sure they stay off. And what they've done is that it's JP2 is sorted out. And whatever this one is, I can't read it because there's a via in the way. I think it's JP8. That's the same. But this one has been moved up here. And on the oscilloscope, you'll see in the next video, it looks fine. I'm not sure which, how many... Um, nanoseconds or microseconds that's um, uh, creating dead time for, but it, it's fine. So I recommend having a nice dead time. Right now, this configuration is the lowest amount of dead time. It's like 100 nanoseconds or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's just the, I'll let the last bit. I've talked long enough. Uh, thanks for watching and play safe.